What's up, Dills? Hey, not back to answer some more goddamn questions. Questions we're going over today. Uh, around the video, just pulled the fuck up. Jerry only the misfits are the kings of pussy footing around. They dick around more than the king. <sighs> Fucking got that right, they do, goddamn it, bra bra. And did anybody ever find out what the fuck they were doing during that 13-year hiatus? They claimed that they, they like to put in their fucking, uh, uh, you know, time they've been around, their discography. Yeah, for right around 40 years. <laughs> like, fuck you had, brah. What'd you do between 84 and 1997? Does anybody actually know? Because I never actually, uh, I mean, maybe they said in an interview or something, but uh, not that I go out and seek interviews, by them, but I've never actually heard what, what, what the hell they're doing. We're doing shit, but based on what I've seen. So, first question marks, uh, bottom, Harry Quinn. Jada, question marks, Reaper has mentioned corrosion of conformity a few times in past videos of his, but it's a band I bet you put in the same lane as goddamn Creed. <laughs> How about it? I'm going to go as far as putting them in the lane of Creed. Uh, there's not too many bands in the same lane as fucking Creed. Uh, Stained is in there, Tool is in there, and goddamn Hootie the Blowfish is in there with Creed, but there's... Shit, Manson and fucking Cold Chamber smoke Creed in my book as well. Creed, that's that's the bottom of the goddamn barrel. Rah, rah. That's unlistenable as fuck. I'd rather slam my head in the car door. As far as Corrosion and Conformity, that was a band that never really did anything for me. The first album was like sloppy thrash punk, which, you know, it's cool for what it is. But it's for me, I bought the LP, listened to it, went, would go in one ear out the other, played it again, one ear out the other, third listen, Pretty much over my head again. I'm like, this shit is the, like literally does nothing for me. So uh got rid of it. I thought Animosity was a pretty decent record, but the best song on there was easily or easy easily uh the song Holier, uh that Nunslaughter covered. And fuck, I have that. That's on the uh, Nunslaughter Rabbit seven inch picture to split. I believe it's on that. I thought Nunslaughter's cover was fucking fantastic of it. And um that was their best song. And then I mean I know they got albums that are what is it like stoner rock guard? I mean, just crap. I would never get into. I think I think Craig likes all those albums, but uh, what's I mean? You know, the vast majority of the stuff he likes, I don't. And vice versa. So chances are, if he likes it, I don't. And if I like it, he probably don't. So it explains that. But uh, yeah, that was just a band I never fucking gave a shit about. To be completely honest with you, Holier is all they got is what I, what I fucking say. But nonetheless, even the shit I don't like is definitely better than fucking Creed. I go as far as putting them that low. Go to eight Tauncher. J Dog, do you think King Diamond went homeboy on the Abigail 2 album? No. Where's their homeboy shit at? Where's, where's there any homeboy shit? What so fucking ever by King Diamond? My only uh gripe with some of the later King Diamond albums is uh got a little bit pussy whipped and said, ah, I gotta have the wife do fucking vocals. I mean, because you know, he claims that oh, her voice was so great and stuff like that. Dude, don't give me that crap. You had to include her, or or you're trying to fucking at the time as before you were uh getting any from her, so you invited her to the band. Because I mean, if you actually do the uh do a little bit of research and uh, just the whole thing. She was like 18 when he got together. So he was like, he's like 50 when, he, when she was like 18, uh, which whatever, good for him. Don't give, give a fuck. But I'm just saying what it is, he's still going to get fucking sucked off or fucking hit that from the back. So, you know, offers her goddamn line. Oh, she did a pretty good job because think about it. The King Diamond had female vocal parts throughout all the albums. The I, Abigail, them with Grandma. He, he did all of them. He did the highs, and they sounded fan fucking fantastic. What, what do you need her ass for? Not to say that she was a bad female vocalist or nothing. It's just, 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 just you know, she was unnecessary. That wasn't the King Diamond fucking formula. Uh, and then there were some tracks that were a little too goddamn wimpy, like So Sad on Puppet Master. Also, the Christmas song at the end, what was it, Living Dead? Maybe it was. Uh, that song was kind of, kind of sucks, to be honest with you. Um, so there was kind of like a bunch of, there was kind of a few tracks that were a little, I don't want to say fruity, but getting a little too fucking uh, pink panty for my uh, liking. But I don't think I'm going to go as far as saying he has anything homeboy. And I like every album of completion. There's a couple songs like uh, on Abigail 2, though, that, you know, as a whole, though, Abigail Part 2 is probably probably the record I like the very least. It's between Abigail 2, Puppet Master, and um, the last one, uh, For God Your Soul. But all of them I, I own. And all of them definitely have some very good songs on there. But uh, like Abigail, too, I, I think Wheelchair was really good. Broken Glass. And the opening track was A Mansion in Sorrow. But songs like Mommy and shit. I mean, just the, the title track, the title of that alone is just dumb. I get it, it's storyline and shit like that. But it's kind of like, I don't know, you did have a little bit more fucking cojones than that. But um, 
Yeah, I wouldn't go as far as saying he had anything homeboy. Where, where's the homeboy shit? Um, but definitely a little bit fucking getting a little too pussified for me. And yeah, chick has got to go. King did his own vocals. He was fantastic on the eye and all that shit. The Abigail and doing the grandma parts. What, what do you need her for? Get get lost, bra bra. That's what I fucking say to her. Here we go. Here's a goddamn good one. Ricky Jones, album battle, Chrissy and Black Force Domain, 1995 versus Severe Torture Feasting on Blood, 2000. Uh, pretty good fucking battle. Kind of irrelevant, though. They're not even from the same year. Um, so I don't know why you picked those two. Uh, it's funny. I actually just listened to uh, Feasting on Blood today as well. And then we finally got them in, which I picked up one of each for myself. I sent the goddamn memo when I saw the uh, when they came out. I was like, got to get these in the distro. Grant, I own the original LPs. piece. Uh, Hammer Heart Records did splatter vinyls of uh, Feasting on Blood, the first album, my personal favorite, goddammit, and uh, Misanthropic Carnage, also a fucking banger. He did uh, clear, they're clear base vinyls with splatters. Those should be on the site by the time you see this. Uh, I'm sure they'll fly out the fucking door. I got mine. Uh, I do own the originals of, of those, original LPs, and I own, uh, well, Feasting on Blood originally came out only as a 12 inch picture. I just own that as well. Own them on CD, but a huge fan would want to splatter vinyl for them. So, actually, listen to Feasting on Blood today. Uh, as a whole, I mean, I would have to say I still like Black Force Domain more, but uh, Feasting on Blood's up there. Really, really like it. I mean, the song Feces for Jesus. Man, goddamn it. What a, what a fantastic fucking title. And goddamn, is that a banger. Definitely my favorite track on the album. And I love that outro, too. God has nothing to do with this. You got that right, goddammit. Yeah, you shouldn't have fuck all nothing to do with nothing. Get that piece of shit off this planet. David S., why did you guys use different artwork for the for Insanity's Death After Death? Uh, that was, believe, uh, Dave from uh, Insanity. Why you know what the thing is with Insanity is, so when I first heard Insanity, it was before, like, anybody kind of knew who they were, too, uh, when they were kind of talking about them, like, before, like, Napalm Death uh, covered them and shit, when they were really obscure. So basically, when Insanity started to get talked about, they're still super fucking underrated, was uh, Napalm Death covered them, and it was around the same time or a little bit after um, Matt Harvey put out that uh, CD, that compilation disc. And I remember uh, Don of the Dead always pissing and whining about it, Sandy, and uh, I kind of agree, uh, but he knows more about it than I do because he's the one that got me into Insanity. It was at his house in the early 2000s. He handed me a CDR, which had the demo, the album, pretty much everything on it, and uh, I remember when uh, Matt's CD came out, he's like, yeah, dude, that, that disc is fucking junk. I was like, how's it junk? This is fantastic. He's like, well, yeah, obviously the music's good. He's like, but it's all fucked up. He's like, it's Dave. He's like, I don't know why he does this. He's like, he chops up his al his, the releases and stuff. That's all he does. I was like, I thought that was like the album. Just like that. It's like, no, dude. He's like, he's like the, 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 it's missing a song. And then he puts in like a single here and there. I'm like, well, that's fucking stupid. He's like, here's what you need. He gave me a burn and I have it to this day. And it has like, there's like an unreleased EP on there, 85 demo, and then the album. Um, and then there's two different recordings for the album. One's a little bit more thrashy. I think that might be the one that we released. I get it all confused. I liked it all. I liked everything about Insanity, even the uh, second album, Visions of, from the Apocalypse. Not quite as good, but still a good fucking album. Um, but Death After Life, I, I'm a huge fan of that album. Total fucking 10. Uh, very underrated. I, I've gone on and say it said and, and right next to uh, deceased. I think death metal wise, death thrash, whatever you put in Sandy as, yes, that they're easily one of the most underrated metal bands ever of all fucking time. Somebody will always say something stupid like Demolic or something. Like you go on any other YouTube channels, yeah, most underrated thing is Demi God or Demolic. Like, not fucking really. Trust me. I mean, as a, as a, as a, a distributor of goddamn metal, we'd get those in and say we get say Demolic. Well, I can I can tell you without a, a shadow of a doubt. At Demi I got as well. Uh, when those got reissued, we get like a hundred of the vinyls in, sold out like that, like fucking, oh, pretty much in one day. At least the first when the first batch came in, and you get a second batch of fifty immediately sold. Insanity wouldn't fucking do that. So we talking like Demi are underrated. Not really. I think they're rated right where they fucking should be. To be honest with you, Insanity. You ask the average fucking Joe in the goddamn metal scene, and I don't even throw out any of the names. <laughs> they haven't heard of sadistic intent. You damn sure know they don't know fucking Insanity. Goddamn it. No names mentioned. Goddamn it. But I'll even just a lot of people in metal scene and be like, Darren Headlight, Darren Headlight's dick in the fucking mouth. But they'll know all the goddamn finished shit and Swedish stuff that everybody everybody brings up. And quite frankly, I think Insanity sends a lot of that shit home on a goddamn stretcher. 
As far as the cover, though, kind of <laughs> not to get off subject to answer your question, I'm sure that's what Dave wanted. Um, we're going back some time. I mean, that was shit. We put that out, what, at least 10 years ago or around 10 years ago? So don't fool you around, but I'm sure it was Dave. I met Dave once briefly at the uh, Buffalo Death Fest, Buffalo Fest, whatever the fuck it was, the one day thing, where uh, Cam Lee played and uh, Sam Biles for Hideous Manglius. Uh, wasn't called Hideous Manglis because I think, what is he, he had a falling out with all the other guys, so he had to call Sam Biles the year. And I think uh, Mass, yeah, I think it was called Cam Lee as well, wasn't it? Or maybe it was called Massacre? But it was all Massacre songs. I thought Cam did a really good job. Met Cam there, and I met, uh, but Insanity played that too. That's where I met Dave. Talked to him very briefly, introduced myself because I knew we were uh, doing or talking about doing the goddamn um, the Insanity stuff. And I think maybe I talked to him on the phone. I took his phone number, and I think I did talk to him over the phone. And actually, Insanity was supposed to do a, a split with uh, Spawn of Satan when Kanye was alive. But obviously, you know, uh, the tracks that Jim was with, they were supposed to do, I don't know if it was, I think it was going to be a 12 inch split. And then Jim passed away. So obviously, that fell through. Now, what did, what did Insanity do with their tracks? Uh, I don't even know, to be honest with you. So, cover art, I'm sure, it was a uh, band's idea. Vincent Flipcroft, J Dog, did you hear the new Caustic Flem single yet? I did not, God damn it, but uh, did, did not even know, but is, uh, so the brand new, it's just single track that what's going to be on an album, or are they doing a 7-inch of it? Um, watch out for that goddamn demo on 7-inch for Hells, hopefully probably by the end of this year, by the time uh, shit goes through, but I, I know it's definitely already laid out, ready to roll. Shirts just came out, and they look fucking mint. j Dog got his. Haven't, haven't worn on camera yet, at least I don't think I have. Um, but nonetheless, I'm sure I'll be caught on camera. But yeah, t-shirts uh, t of the demo. We got best demo of 2022, at least best one that I fucking heard, uh, Caustic Flem, and we're doing it on fucking vinyl. Have not heard the single, though, but uh, I will I'll search it out when I remember to. Super Bowman, question, J-Dog. I'm sure you've never seen it, but what's your thoughts on Jerry only wrestling in WCW? Uh, I haven't seen it, seen it, but I, I knew, I've heard about it. It was very short-lived, and he was paired off with a Juggalo. <laughs> yeah, what Juggalo was that? Uh, I don't really have any thoughts. I mean, cool for him. I mean, hopefully he made a lot of fucking money. Uh, maybe that's what he was at between 84 and 1997. So that explains, like you said, though. Because here's the thing is it probably was, uh, or I'm assuming it was. Like, that'd be hilarious. It wasn't. Oh, no, it was actually 1999. It's like, okay, well, that still doesn't answer what the fuck he did between 84 and 97. But let's just say, now that you bring that up, that probably would be his excuse. Oh, well, dude, I'm just a fucking idiot. I, I was in WCW and shit for, for what, one year? And even he said it was short-lived. You weren't fucking Hulk Hogan it up and had a goddamn 20-year career. So you cut the shit, brah. You had one year off. What are you, so what are you talking about? What happened to the other 12? And what even that, even that, you weren't on the road fucking 365 days a year. Probably did a show here and there, and that's about it. So even that one year, it wasn't like from sunrise to sunset. You were wrestling, you had nothing but, uh, able to do. So yeah, as far as misfits, what the fuck are you doing, brah? As far as opinion, though, I mean, good for him. You know what I mean? You make a lot of money, you know? Cool for him. I don't care one way or another, to be honest. Never actually physically saw it, but I did I did know about it, yes. Didn't uh, Doyle wrestle with him too? Or did he did it as well? Some shit like that. Alex. Uh sub I dog. Not sure if you'll recognize me. I'm that guy from Mississippi that orders like 20 CDs at a time. Well <laughs> you gotta be a little more specific than that. Uh, there's a lot of guys who order 20 CDs and plus at a time. Anyway, I was wondering if you think. Dave Ingram, a man of court, void meditation call, would do an interview. <laughs> uh, I'd be up for it, but I doubt he would. I'm a huge fan of both bands and think that would be a really interesting one. It would be. It would be. Uh, I wouldn't be against it because, um, yeah, no one's ever done one with him. Um, I think he just wouldn't want to do it. Um, I'd have to think of shit to ask him too, because I mean, I've been, I've known and been friends with Dave for. I met Dave for the first time in 1999. It was outside of. Um, emperor in the parking lot he was handing out tickets for a show coming up for uh blood coven playing because that's when he was in the band blood coven at the time because he is on the first um blood coven al album so check out blood coven the album that he's on it's called ashes of an autumn burning uh pretty good record my only complaint with the, uh that album was uh the songs were it's like seven songs and it's like 54 minutes all in all though especially the title track when it kicks in it's, it's, it's relatively a pretty goddamn good song but uh in case you happen to give a fuck dave's on that too so go check that out since you're such a diehard um, yeah, he's a very, very interesting character. Uh, you know, it's funny, uh, got a little bit kind of a fun story, uh, about it might not be as funny to you guys because you don't know the guy, but Dave's definitely an interesting character where he's much different than the norm. 
And you know how I'm out of the loop on shit? I don't have social media and I don't know about sports games and shit like that. He's out of the loop like ten tenfold over me. So you think I'm out of the loop? He 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 makes me look like I'm in the fucking loop as far as like current shit, you know, like modern stuff and just all the trendy crap that goes on, you know, whether it be music or uh sports and all that shit. Um totally out of the loop guy. And he's uh also, you know, he listens to like a lot of the uh the Archgoat, the blasphemies, the Beharits, that's kind of like his forte. Um, I mean, he likes other stuff too. I know he likes Immolation, Dawn of Possession a lot. I know he likes Sinister Diabolical Summoning. So I know some of that stuff. But uh, it's funny because <laughs> Craig Reaper one time just guys are jokes. He knew he wasn't going to ask him. He kind of asked him with a serious face. He's like, "Hey, Dave." He's like, "He's like, do you like Tool?" Dave's like, Ugh. "Like it's an appall answer." He's like, uh, uh, "I guess I'd have to go back and listen to it, but uh." No, <laughs> that was his response. And it's even funnier now because me bringing that horrifically dog shit ass fucking band up on this channel. There's some people like, what, what, what are you talking about? Pull it, pull it's pretty good, bro. And it's just funny because like people in the underground, people that I grew up, you know, around and just hearing the opinions of Dave being one of them. I mean, Dwayne Morris is another one. Uh, you know, Don, Jim, King Follies, the, the Baxters, etc. It's just like, automatically, like, you kind of wouldn't even ask that, like, yeah, yeah, no, that shit sucked balls, like, why, why, why would you bring it up, like, it's a universally known fact, but it's funny, because doing this channel, and, like, kind of, like, anyone can watch it, I mean, some fucking four-year-olds can watch it, you know what I mean, fucking watch it, and sucking his thumb right after goddamn Baby Shark, j Dog will fucking uh, pop right up on his screen, right, so, theoretically, it's open to anybody, so you get some of those commenters, like, what's what this guy talking about, it's fucking great, like, it's just completely clueless, you know what I mean? So it's it's, it's, it's extra fucking hilarious. Go to the underground, man. That's, <laughs> that's just that's what the fuck you get made fun of for that crap. But I'd be up for it, but I doubt he would. He's not a very uh, he doesn't like the spotlight. Let's just say that he doesn't like. He's a different. He's just, yeah, he's a different character. That's for sure. But uh, I think it would be interesting myself. Wicked Devil, question marks, King Devil, what do you think of King, King, you mean Liver King's apology? Um, to me, I don't care. You know, I don't follow the guy and I don't give a shit what he does. And him, like, apologizing for taking steroids, I mean, to me, there's nothing to apologize about. Anyone that fell for it is just a fucking idiot. Like, I kind of like, that's your stick, go, go for it. I, the thing is, it's funny because, like, I give it to you guys gun barrel straight when you ask that shit. And it's like, I'm in that world. So I kind of know what's up. So I guess anyone that felt deceived, my part of me is kind of like, well, you almost deserve to be ripped off if you're that dumb. Like if you literally like you bought all his products, you're like, I'm going to look like him because I'm going to do just what he does. And you think it's, he's all national and he just lives that, what does he call it? The uh, ancestral lifestyle or some shit. I mean, if you fell for it, then I guess you deserve to be disappointed. Me, I don't, I don't give a shit where he does either way. And uh, yeah, I can just tell one stick. Once one one glance at him, I knew. Oh, well, yeah, no, of course he's not natural. So I was like, this guy's claiming he is. Oh, well, then he's a liar. Like what else? Like personally, if I was him and he was so in the uh, mainstream spotlight, he should have just been like in pre-interviews, uh, like prefaces, like uh, I don't want to talk about it if, since he wants since he's marketing that gimmick, just living the ancestral ancestral lifestyle like how our ancestors did. Um, he should have just said, yeah, no, no comment. Um, you know, before digging himself in that goddamn ditch. But I don't know his problem. I I don't. Like the guy, I don't dislike the guy. I don't give a shit one way or another. I never watch any of his stuff. He just come across the feeds, he pops up, and you see people talking about him. I see it and just like eating liver and organs and shit like that. I'm like, I don't know why anybody's making such a big deal about this. People have been doing this for years. My, my fucking dad would eat uh, liver and shit like that. He's, he hunts and he's they, they they would eat that too. My dad don't look anything like that guy. So it's like, what are you talking about? You think he looks like that because of that? Like, there's no food on the earth that's gonna make you look like that. So what the fuck are you talking about? So it's. Yeah, it's just a bunch of box chocolates that fucking fell for it. And him apologize. Whether he needed to apologize or not, I don't know. I didn't carry the way. Richie, uh, which era of Misfits do you prefer and why? Danzig or Michael Grace? I mean, definitely Danzig, but I do like the Michael Grace albums. And why? I mean, there's no other reason than I just enjoy it more. <laughs> That's the reason why. Like this the last goddamn run from Ryan Zerta 2. Question, goddammit. What do you think of my top five albums of 2022 in no particular order? And what are yours? 
D six six six. No, never surrender. You know, I haven't yet to listen to the full album yet. Just a couple songs, and then I had the seven inch primarily for the same reason I've said about a lot of stuff. As I don't really want to listen to the whole thing on YouTube. I'd rather listen to it like on a black blaring stereo to get the fucking full D six 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 effect. But what I have heard, songs like Guillotine and shit, um, I liked very much so so far. Nunslaughter no Red is the color. Simulation Acts of God. Spider Bathe the Bathe. Babe. Uh, Grand Blouse Key Kohanic. Charmers. Cheers, brah. I think that's a pretty good uh, 5 of 2022. Uh, I don't know what my exact list was. I know definitely uh, Pharmacist is on there for me. The Flourishing, the sec whatever the fuck it's called. You know, flourishing and whatever. Um, the second album by them, that's definitely my top five. I would say Spider's definitely my top five. And then the rest I'd have to evaluate. But all the ones you mentioned, I think those, I, I own every single one of those. I picked those up myself. I thought those were all good albums. Uh, other ones I know that would be in there that I liked this year. Uh, that I see missing is dark, the new dark funeral. I really like that. I liked that fucking homeboy shit. I was fucking, uh, you know, thumping that fucking a few, actually thumped that this fucking today as well. Thumped that. And, uh, so today's spin list was thumped. Was I can tell you exactly what I thumped in the fucking warehouse. New dark funeral again, probably like six or seven time I listened to it. <coughs> Severe torture feasting on blood. And, uh, Gore Fest demos. Uh, we got some bootleg demo discs that just came in. I'm like, oh, sweet. Gore Fest demos. Grand, I've heard them before and shit. And they're on other releases. Like, uh, there's like a reissue LP that came out a few years ago and shit. They're on there. But nonetheless, can't go wrong with goddamn Gore Fest demos. It's funny. I just recently brought them up. Whatever. A couple weeks ago, by the time you see this channel, about how underrated my losses and shit. So it's about a week after I, uh, when I'm, you know, today. But when I posted that, and that's, oh, I just talked about Gore Fest recently. Fuck yeah. Since somebody, uh, probably, uh, maybe it's not a bootleg, but it, I'm pretty sure it's a bootleg. Like, they didn't have, like, official label on the back. Um, I don't do the stocking, so I don't know where it comes from. When people are like, oh, how would you get this shit? I don't fucking know, dude. Came in, and fucking, I, I was cool to see it. Per person, I'm going to pick it up. Because I don't have a separate release where it's just the demos commemorated on there. And I'm a huge Gorefest fan, fan, as you guys know. So uh, that'll be adding to the goddamn J-Dog uh, collection in the background that you see on most of the fucking videos, goddamn. So that's what I played today. So another 2022 albums. Uh, I'd have to think about it, because I can't remember what else fucking came out in 2022. But... Yeah, very similar to yours, actually, for the most part. Hey, who's this one of those cops' questions, sirs? Put the cops' spots, can't answer right in the morning. Leader, goddammit.